Hello everyone. I'm going to do a book review today. I'm going to be talking about Stephen King's book, Dance Macabre. This is one of Stephen King's few works of nonfiction that he's published. It came out in 1981. Um, this is a old paperback I have of it. Um, by 1981, Stephen King was becoming really well known. His first three novels, Carrie, Salem's Lot, and The Shining, were all made into movies. And The Stand, another famous King novel, also came out by the end of the 70s. So by 1981, King was starting to become a household name. Like even people who weren't into horror, they knew who Stephen King was. And, um, and as cor of course, as more movies were being made from his novels, King King's fame in, just grew by leaps and bounds through the 1980s. So, so at this point in the early 80s, he's really riding a wave of um, just putting out one bestseller after another and um, becoming much more of a of a public figure as well. So, this book was his history of the horror genre and King primarily focuses on, it's not a complete history. It's mainly a post-war history from after world war II to like the early 1980s. So although King does spend time getting into the, the origins of, of the horror genre, like he talks, he writes a lot about Bram, Bram Stoker's Dracula or Mary Shelley's Frankenstein or, um, um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, he does spend time on, on some, some of the foundational texts of the genre, but mostly he's focused on um, the 20th century. Um, the writing style is very informal, um, it's, but also engaging. It's informal and engaging, and like I said, he, it does get into some academic stuff, but it's, King writes about it in a very presentable way. You know, you almost feel like you're in the same room with Stephen King at times because you're like you're at a, at a dinner party and he's kind of holding court talking about all these movies and novels that that, that inspired him. So it's it's just a fun read. I, I've read the book a few times myself. I pick it up a lot. I'll just pick it up and start reading. Um, you know, and see, and just get something out of it. So, so it's um, a lot of fun to read. Um, certainly, if you're a Stephen King fan, it, it, it's def if you want to learn more about, you know, the inspirations behind some of King's novels, it's definitely definitely one to read. You know, if you're if you're just interested in the novels, you, this one may not be for you. But like I said, I enjoyed a lot. You get a lot of history. You get a lot of interesting commentary. And um, like I said, it's it's um, inter very entertaining throughout to to read this book. Um, the book is arranged in like like some, there's some autobi autobiography autobiography at the beginning where King talks about some incidents from his childhood and talks about some of the early, some of his early, um, engagement with, with, um, horror stories. Like he tells a story about finding in an attic, some HP Lovecraft books. He tells that story in here, which is really good. And then he gets into, into sections where there's a section, a very brief section on radio, um, radio horror, which was popular, you know, thirties and forties. And then there's a section on television. There's a section on movies. And then the longest section is on horror fiction itself, where he, he gives his take on these things. One of the big takeaways from the book, and it gives one of the big insights it gives about King is how even at a young age, and I think this is indicative of his generation at a young age, King consumed a lot of pop culture, a lot of comic books and movies and, and, and TV and all that. And, but not only consumed it and enjoyed it, but but took it seriously as as art right up there with you know your more highbrow literature or movies 
things like that. And, and that's been an ongoing thing throughout King's career where, you know, like his favorite writer and in college, he tells stories about when he was a college student in, in, in Maine and in, in the sixties and getting into arguments with, with his English professors. And King would say that writers like Robert Block, who wrote Psycho or Ray Bradbury or Richard Matheson, that their work was just as important as, as some of the, big name writers that, that are frequently taught at, that were frequently taught at colleges at that time. And he, he also gets into why, why it was important, not just, I think it's cool. We should teach it. No, he actually gets into analyzing how the sociological importance of, of these books and what they, what they had to say about, about culture and, and, and things, things like that. So, so that's a big thing running through it. And and with movies as well, like King spends, I don't know, four or five pages talking about I Was a Teenage Werewolf, which was a a B movie from the 50s, starred Michael Landon, young, very young Michael Landon as a high school kid who who turns into a werewolf. And and a movie that at the time in the 50s that year more serious critic, serious public would just consider it junk, you know, like considered comic books junk, considered a lot of television to be not worthy worthy of their attention, and the, and the same with movies like this. And, and King, being of the younger generation, said, oh, no, these these low-budget movies you think are, are disposable. No, they're very important, and they actually speak to young people in, in very direct and, and profound ways. And, and, yeah, that's just one of the recurring motifs throughout – throughout the book where, where King is really making a case for, for um, what would be considered like, like low, lower brow culture in, in, in the post-war era. And um, yeah. And so that's, that's interesting. Um, another big thing in the book is, yeah, I, I mentioned movies. He talks about, he talks about television and, and, Shows like The Twilight Zone, Thriller is a big show. A, thr a Thriller, a show that was hosted by Boris Karloff that I've actually not seen too many of those, but but he he makes he really goes to bat for that TV show and and things like that too. Um, the book is also valuable that the end King includes lists. Okay, we you know we love our lists, and he has a list of movies of, of formative movies and and very interesting. I looked at. He left a list of a hundred novels, um, primarily horror, some fantasy and, and science fiction novels that influenced him. And, and all these novels were published like from the forties to the early eighties. And, and actually as part of a larger project, I want to try to read as many of those books as I can. Um, a lot of them I haven't read, or it's been a long, long time since I've read some of them. Um, some of them are, I, I most a lot of them I'd never heard of, and and some of them are quite easy to get these days. I think some have gone out of print. It might be harder to get a hold of, but but I would like to read as many books as I can that that King included on that list of recommended horror fiction at at, at the end. Like right now, I'm reading um, Ghost Story by Peter Straub which is a book that King writes about in Dance Macabre. And King was a big fan of, of Ghost Story. And and I had read the book a long time ago. It's been so long, so I'm doing a reread of it. And I'll probably do a review of, of Ghost Story sometime soon. And, of course, King and Straub would collaborate on novels as well. Um, they, they wrote The Talisman together which came out in the mid eighties. And then they did a sequel called black house, which came out several years later. So, so, um, yeah, yeah. So, but Des Macabre, a really, a really engaging book. Somewhat. Yeah. It's dated. Like I said, a lot of the cultural references King makes, if you're a younger person reading this, you know, yeah, the references are going to be, be a bit, um, antiquated. And, uh, you know, even when King's writing is in the eighties, you know, shows like the twilight zone and seem like a distant memory, but, but they've continued on TV. So, so I think 
Yeah, it's dated, but it's still important. Just because it's longer ago doesn't mean what he's talking about is lost any any of its importance or, or even influence. So I know King has been asked if he would ever do like a like a sequel to this book or update it, and I think I, I read he said, "Well, it would be too much of an undertaking to to cover four more decades or so of pop culture and." So, yeah, yeah, which is understandable. And, you know, King is on social media and he often makes posts about cult, pop culture stuff and, and things like that, too. So, so yeah, um, a great read. You know, like I said, it's, it's not a complete history of the genre by any means. It's not that, doesn't claim to be that. But it, it's a good starter, though, if, if for anyone who wants to maybe learn about what horror is all about. You could do worse than starting with, with this book. So, all right. Um, um, I will talk to you later, and, and have a good day.